Hi, it's John Guest again, and this is going to be a short video going through question three in the article in the September 2016 edition of the Economic Review, written by John Sloman on climate change. And in this question, you were asked to think about figure one from the article and to think about how it would differ if instead of a perfectly competitive market, we had a pure monopoly. That it's very, very common in externality diagrams to see an externality imposed on a market that's competitive. So how would this differ if the market actually was a pure monopoly? So again, I've just tried to reproduce the diagram from the text, from the article. So as best as I can, hopefully this looks like figure one in the climate change article. And obviously we're assuming perfect competition. So the output in a perfectly competitive equilibrium will be simply where supply equals demand at point A and the output would be QPC. And as the article discusses, the market leads to overproduction. So simply looking at private costs and benefits, we get this output QPC. The allocatively efficient outcome for society would be QE. And the article discusses various options for governments or policy options to try and correct for this overproduction. Now, let's imagine that instead of a perfectly competitive market, the market was a pure monopoly. And we're going to assume that the pure monopoly is a profit maximizer. It's not regulated in any way by the government. So what can the pure monopoly do? Well, obviously it'll aim to maximize the profits of the industry as a whole. And to illustrate that, we need to add a marginal revenue curve. Remember the marginal revenue will have the same intercept as the demand curve, and it should be twice as steep. And remember the profit maximizing monopolist would simply produce where the marginal cost for the industry is equal to the marginal revenue. And I've labeled that as point D in this diagram. And this is quite interesting. So what would happen here? The pure monopoly would produce QM. And if you just look at this diagram and think about this for a minute, so normally we assume that negative externalities lead to a market producing too much. And governments often, we talk about governments taxing to try and correct for that uh, negative externality. In this diagram, because it's a monopoly, the outcome is still is actually below it's less than the efficient outcome and again you so in this situation if you think this one through carefully even though we're creating pollution here if we actually look at this diagram the optimal policy solution here would actually be to subsidize the companies that are polluting rather than uh, taxing them because the market is actually producing too little it's producing less than the efficient outcome. So that hopefully will make you think a little bit. Now, actually, the impact of a monopoly will depend on the size of the externality. And what I'm going to do is actually just change the diagram a bit and make the externality bigger. So effectively, if we make the externalities bigger, then the gap between these two lines, the marginal private cost and the marginal social cost will get bigger. So hopefully I'm just going to get rid of that marginal social cost line. So hopefully we'll get rid of all the, the labeling that goes with that. So we're back to the original diagram. We've still got a monopoly producing at point D. Now let's assume that the external costs are actually bigger. The externalities are bigger. And I've sort of fiddled this diagram slightly, but let's imagine that now the gap between the marginal social cost and the marginal private cost is bigger because the externalities are bigger. And so therefore the efficient outcome for the market will be where the marginal social cost is equal to the marginal social benefit at this point here, point C. And you hopefully you can begin to see why I've drawn this where I have, because actually this sits directly above where the monopoly will produce without any regulation from the government. So if the externality actually happened to be this size, if the pollution effects were of this magnitude, then interestingly, if the market was a pure monopoly, it would actually produce the allocatively efficient output QE without any government intervention whatsoever. 
there would be no taxes, no subsidies required. The monopoly on its own would produce the output that would be the most advantageous to society. I'll leave it to you. You can go and experiment and draw this line in different places and, and play around with different sizes of externality. Obviously, if we make the externality big enough, then if we draw it to the left of the marginal social cost here, then the monopoly will produce too much without any government regulation, a bit like a perfectly competitive industry. It's just that the overproduction would be less than under a perfectly competitive industry. So again, hopefully that helps with the answer to question three. And I think it's quite interesting just to think about the impact of externalities on a market that's not a perfectly competitive one, to try and think through what impact it would have if we had a different market structure, and in particular in this case if it was pure monopoly, because the outcome and the policy implications are very, very different. So hopefully you found that useful, and thank you.